All right, so now we are asked another puzzle, right? How many kilograms of sodium ascorbate and ascorbic acid are needed to make 10 liters, whoa, of pH 4.25 buffer if the total concentration of the two buffer components is 0.5 molar? What the heck? What are they asking even? Whew. Well, I might want to just start by trying to figure out what they have given me because they've just used a bunch of things I'm not even used to seeing, right? First of all, ascorbic acid. Well, that's nice. What's its formula? Which one of the H's is it gonna lose, right? Um, you might find this written down, oops, put the C first. You might find it written down like this. This is not very helpful in figuring out which, one's, which one left. So uh, you might also see it like this. Oh, this guy must have the possibility of being able to lose two hydrogens then, but we're probably not worried about that. If you go look up sodium ascorbate, which isn't the easiest word to say, by the way, you'll find it's written as nac 6 H7O6. Ah, it would probably be better if I'm thinking about this as being the acid. I am going to kill this phone. <laughs> if you're thinking about this as being the acid, to instead of using the seven here, to say that the part of this you're interested in would be HC6H6. O6 negative, because of course the sodium was the positive part. So I can see that this would be my acid, not a surprise since acid's in the name, and this would be my conjugate base. And it does differ by just an H and a plus. So conjugate base, that's good. Now, what else do I know? I know that I want to make a pH of 4.25. Well, apparently they're leaving us to go look up what the pKa is of ascorbic acid. When you do go look it up, you find out that it's 4.04. .04. And to complete the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation here, it's going to be the logarithm of the base concentration over the acid concentration. At this point, I can say, oh, if this is supposed to be true, then 0.21 must be this logarithm of the base over the acid. Put in my nice little square brackets so that I know what I'm talking about. But since I'm interested in what these are and they're being obscured by this logarithm, it means that I need to undo the logarithm by using the fact that it's, it's a, a log base 10. So 10 to the 0.21 is going to be the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. If I use this in my calculator, I will find out then that the concentration of the base is supposed to be 1.62 times the concentration of the acid. Well, that's nice. It's still got two unknowns. What else did they say? Oh, the total concentration of the two components is 0.5 molar. Okay, so they're telling me that I now can say, let's, let's look at two equations in two unknowns. The second equation is that the amount of acid plus the amount of base is 0 0.50. Oh. All right, I have two of those. All right, if I start doing that, then I can say, all right, you know what? Let me use a substitution to do this. I'll go ahead and I will say that the amount of acid then, the concentration of acid is 0.500 minus the concentration of base. 
and I will put this piece of information in right here. When I do that, then I find out base concentration equals 1.62 times 0 0.500 minus the base concentration. This ends up being 0.81 minus 1.62, the base concentration, which means you're going to get 2.62 concentration of base equals 0.81. And when you solve for the concentration of base, you will get whoops, 0 0.309 molar. Once you've got that, you can come back up here and substitute and say, okay, the concentration of acid then is going to be 0 0.500 minus 0 0.309, and it will be 0.191 molar. Well, that's great. We've done all this work. We'd like... we. We think we've done enough work, but guess what? The question asks how many kilograms to make 10 liters. So we're not done. We still have some work to do. Well, darn it all, <laughs> okay? Let's work first of all on the base. The base was the sodium ascorbate. And that was the formula here. If you go figure out what its um, molar mass is, or you know, ask Siri or whatever, then you find out that when you're working for the part that is the base, just remind yourself of what that is. Oh, what did I write here? Oh, that's a C, a C6, <laughs> H706. All right, there we go. You're gonna be looking for the number of kilograms. You know, what your molarity is. It's the 0 0.309, molarity. Well, what does molarity stand for? It stands for moles per liter. And you know that you're gonna be making 10 liters of this. There, that took care of this, the liters, that, that got canceled out. Now I know how many moles I want, and this gets right back to stuff from Chem 2. You go use your molar mass, grams per mole. That will take care of the moles. And, but they ask for kilograms, so one more little thing, that one kilogram is the same as 1,000 grams. And run this through your calculator, and you will get 0.612 kilograms. If you do the same thing for the acid, which was the C6H806, you're asking number of kilograms, you're going to say how much acid was there concentration-wise, 0.191 molarity, oh, which is moles per liter again. Again, you're trying to make 10 liters of solution, and you go look up your molar mass, grams per mole, that get rid of the moles, and the kilogram is 1,000 grams. And boom, you have 0.336 kilograms. Now, you might look back at this and say, do I really have three sig figs? Um, even though you did here, I'm thinking here you don't. So you might end up rounding this. So you might end up round it back to 0.61 kilograms. And this one rounding up to point three, four kilograms would probably be the better answer in this case. So up here, we have the Anderson-Hasselbach equation. That's what we started with up here. And then we looked up the pKa because they didn't tell us in the problem. So I had to go find it in a table. And I also looked up the molar masses that I used at the bottom of the problem.